Hi, everybody. I want to talk about the main idea that was presented in uh, the Girl Text Fair reading this week, and that is creating pie paragraphs. They're the key to a successful paper once you have a solid thesis. From what I can tell from your uh, discussions in your small groups, most of you have a very strong thesis. Some of them need reworded because of... Um, the way they come out in that generator there. Um, what is a pie paragraph? Well, it's a way to develop a paragraph. You have a point, you have an illustration, and you have an explanation. Um, what is a point? The point is the main idea of the paragraph. It's the main point. And you use one of your supporting ideas as your point. Many of you wrote in the uh, small group discussion your thesis and the three things that are three main ideas that support your thesis. So when you're writing a paragraph, you're going to write probably three or four of those, depending how many points you have. And you, each of those paragraphs have to have a point. It's kind of like a mini thesis. Um, in shorter papers, you'll probably just have one sentence to explain the main idea, except if the point needs a definition or more explanation. Um, in longer papers, you're going to have, probably have to discuss the point for two or three sentences before you get to the next thing, which is the illustration. And illustrations are examples, stories, facts, or ideas that support the P point. Um, it's the heart of the paragraph. You'll probably write three to four sentences to show the illustrations, although sometimes you can explain the illustration in one point, especially if it's a fact, or in one sentence, especially if it's a fact. Um, so you'll, you'll, by this point, have your um, main idea for the paragraph, the P um, point, and it's going to be... Um, one sentence, and if you have a fact, it's going to be one sentence or more. It's going to depend on what you are saying. The explanation causes students the most problems. I find in drafts, I get the P, I get the I, and I don't get an E. So it's like the information kind of f flows out of the paragraph, and the, because the reader doesn't understand why the... Um, why did they say this? How does the explanation support the point? So you have to explain why the I supports the P. You have to tie the illustration to the point. Explanations usually are more than one sentence. They can be three or four. They are the, they are the part that um, that's where your ideas come in, what you think and how these things apply. Oops. Um, now, for example, um, my thesis might be, what is going on here? My thesis might be the ban on Muslim travel to the U.S. is a diversion from what Trump is really doing. So I have to make a point, a P in paragraph one. While the news media was focused on the protests at the airport, Trump appointed Steve Bannon to the National Security Council. That's one of my supporting points for this, if I had that as a uh, thesis for a paper. So then I have to give an illustration, a why, why um, an illustration that, that shows my point, that proves my point. Um, so my I is simply one sentence. Trump dismissed the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Heads from the, oh, excuse me, that's the, okay. Trump dismissed, I can't even read my own sentence, can you believe that? Trump dismissed the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staffs, heads from the Armed Forces, saying that, or Armed Services, saying that they would be asked to meetings as necessary. That's my illustration. That's something that happened while everybody was out at the airports. Now I have to explain why that is important. By adding Banyan, a known anti-Semite, the National Security Council, to, to, I should say, to the National Security Council while the media was distracted, 
there has been little outcry about his appointment. The appoint appointment places an ideological edge to what was a once a bipartisan group. So I'm explaining my I. And let's read it all together, if I make any sense. Remember, this is supporting the thesis. While the news media was focused on the protest at the airport, Trump appointed Steve Bannon to the National Security Council. Trump dismissed the heads of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, that's heads from the armed services, saying that they would be asked to meetings as necessary. The appointment places, and I'm, now I'm getting into explanation, the ideological edge to once was um, a bipartisan group. By adding Banyan, a known anti-Semite, the National Security Count to the National Security Council, while the media was distracted, um, there has been little outcry about his appointment. So I've made one of my points that supports my thesis statement. Okay, so hopefully this little. Um, video will help you understand a little bit more about what um, she is saying, Gil is saying in the textbook, um, the part that you will read for this week. If you have any questions, you know where to find me and you know that raise your hand is a good place for questions that you would raise your hand for.